The power of Ab. The power of Ab. We've just completed Christmas. Did we Ab during Christmas? No. No, not really. We did not. We had a lot of busy things going on, a lot of activities, activities, but it was worth it, right? It was everything that you wanted. All right. I wanted to share a little bit about some of the times of Jesus that you may not be aware of. Uh, but you'll read that, you'll read these things and you'll skip over them because you want to get to the good stuff, right? But Jesus went apart to pray often. A lot. He would disappear, the disciples didn't know where he was, and he would t be gone for days in the quiet, praying, being by himself, taking time away. And then sometimes they go look for him, oftentimes they just stop looking for him and knew he'd come back when he was ready. But when you're reading those scriptures, don't you just skip through that? Let's skip through that. What else? What did, what did he say when he got back? Because we're so action-oriented. We're action. We don't realize that those moments when we pull away, those are the moments when we can really begin to assimilate what we've learned. He would take, uh, there are many accounts of him meditating for seven days with masters, with other masters on the planet. He would meditate with his disciples. Um, you know, the, sometimes he'd take Peter, James, and John, the three of the inner circle, and we know about the Mount of Transfiguration. He took the three of them up. He's preparing for his last days, and he's meditating and talking with masters, and they're sleeping. But they were having with him in their own way. So even Jesus demonstrates to us that as human beings, we need to have this time of ab, this down. I wanted to share one of the scriptures that I absolutely adore. And this is one that did catch me when I read it the very first time. I was like, he did what? <laughs> because I have been known to be quite the working person. I won't claim that in totality any longer, but I was at one time. So chapter 123, verse 10, Jesus went alone across the hills of Galilee, and after certain days he reached the coast in the home of Rachel, and then he stayed. Rachel lived on the coast. He did not advertise his coming, for he did not come to teach. He would commune with God there, and he wanted to be there where he could see the waters of the mighty sea. And I just had a pause. Jesus took time to go to the beach. <laughs> to watch the waters. To be in the love of God. And he didn't want to teach. Don't tell anybody I'm here. Well, you know, that didn't work. But there's another story behind that, and you can read that at your, at your leisure. But he was trying to take some time. And then I wanted to also share this. This is in chapter 40. And this is when he's talking about the silence. He's teaching people about how to meditate, but he says this. The silence is the kingdom of the soul, which has not been seen by human eyes. When in the silence, phantom forms may flit before the mind, but they are all subservient to the will, and the master soul may speak and they are gone. If you would find the silence, you must yourself prepare the way, and then you will find the pure in heart, you will find yourself. So it is staying in a moment in your own energy that we find ourselves. And Jesus had to always come back to his core and his center of finding who he is. You all understand what I'm saying? His world was filled with the consciousness of survival. The race consciousness was that of survival, injustices, and challenges. The thoughts of the people were heavy and they were oppressed. His message was light. His message was love. So his mission and the people's energy did not always match, did they? So it was necessary for him to refocus, wasn't it? It was necessary for him to go away and get back into what is true for him and who is he. So think about our world today. Our world of mass communication. Why do you think about that word? That, that means you are communicating with the masses. Yay! <laughs> You're in in the th thick of all the activity that's going on, all the thoughts, all the beingness, all the energy. So, we are exposed to so many thoughts and so many emotions that are not ours. We need time to process and to file all of those emotions. 
So we have a little visual, so I'd like my, my team to take off. <laughs> I realize that sometimes when I speak to you, they're just words. And so sometimes you need to actually be able to see perhaps someone you know, if not yourself. So I'm hoping that with this little visual you can see a little bit about what happens when we walk in our world and how we deal with our emotions. You guys can set up. So I'm going to pull this down. This is Abby. Abby is a very busy girl. And I think her guide is coming. Here is her guide. Her guide is a young spirit who is always helping her and trying to teach Abby how to learn to live in love. This isn't always easy. Now, since you can't see Abby's energy, her guide is going to help you out. This is her energy field. <laughs> she has a very busy job. She's meeting people all the time, talking about how her company can benefit them. She has many friends. She has to stay in touch with them all the time. And like many young people, she's very concerned about the condition of the world. She listens to the news. She pays attention to financial trends. And she also follows the latest fashion. <laughs> Here is her boyfriend in the middle. He is in the middle of her crown. He is part of her purpose. The darker the thoughts, the more negative the thoughts. Now you can see the band here. Everything below the band are Abby's thoughts. Everything above the band are thoughts of others. As you can see, the thoughts of others are actually occupying more space than her thoughts do. Which is a problem if you're looking for clarity, direction, <laughs> love, inspiration, <laughs> even creativity. But Abby has recently learned she needs to meditate to clear her energy every day, and she is just beginning to start this practice. Okay, so I have my candle. Yes, check. I have my Bible. That's great. I have my blanket. I have my phone. Do I need my phone? Yes, I, I will set my timer. That's what I'll do. Okay. All right, I think I'm ready. Okay, I'm just going to close my eyes, center myself. I'm going to relax. I'm relaxing. I call my guy to be with me now. I'm here. I'm always here. <laughs> I'm going to relax and just feel your love. Yes. to ignore that and focus. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it's Maddie. Wow, you're going really fast. Hold on a second. Oh, he did what? No. Girl, that is not a good boyfriend. Um, hey, maybe you should be paying attention to your own boyfriend. You know, the one you love and all. <laughs> My boyfriend is good. I'm, he is not like this. No. You know, what you need to tell him is that that is rude. You don't do that. Yeah. I cannot believe that. And they freeze. So, 30 minutes later, her energy has actually changed, but not necessarily for the good. Mm. Oh, I'm really sorry. I wish I could help you. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Just, I don't know, maybe have wine together or something. Okay. And our guide is now showing you what has happened during the conversation. 
She has energy that's now moving through her field because she's picked up all the thoughts of her friend and all the problems that her friend had with her boyfriend. That's really a bummer. Well, I have five minutes left to meditate, so <coughs> might as well do it, right? Okay. <sighs> I'm going to try and relax. God, can you help my friend? <laughs> she did say God. <laughs> Actually, God, can you help me help my friend? <sighs> she did say help me. I mean, she did say those words. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have her answers. Let her go. You don't have her answers. As you can see, she's been pulled in pretty deep. And look, <gasps> it's affecting her relationship with her own boyfriend. Let her go. You need to let her go. God, can you just tell me what to do to help my friend? <laughs> let her go. <laughs> you don't have her answers. Oh, just, can you, God, please help my friend? Abby, you need to let her go. Okay. God, I hear you. Let her go. Yep. I'll let her go. You help her. Yes? Okay. Oh. Can you just help me? I need to feel you. I just need to feel you. Oh, I need to feel you. Oh, that feels good. All right, well, that's five minutes. <sighs> it's time. Take. Okay. Time's up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm ready for my day. <sighs> At least there was some movement. Abby leaves her meditation without realizing just how much energy is still there from others in her field. But there's always tomorrow's meditation. Let's hope. <sighs> okay. meditation like that because your guys just snapped at you and it's time all right this is what I wanted you to hear from the little skit let y'all come back thank you oh yes I need the board on the board from the skit you can see that the massive amount of thoughts that move in and out of our energy field and these thoughts come into our world whether we're aware of it or not. Now, you can see how clear her thoughts are, can't you? She has very clearly formed beliefs and thoughts. If she's in her own world, it's probably quite tidy. She probably runs quite effortlessly doing what she needs to do. But when we look at all of this massive energy, it becomes challenging. This is what Spirit said. One more minute. <laughs> You've heard it's all about perception. How we view things determines our world, but it's a little bit more. The energy we live in, the energy we are not aware of, the energy we are not able to sort, fills our fields until we're able to process it. And it always stays in our fields like it came into our fields, through the perceptions of others. So not only are these random thoughts, they are the beliefs and the perceptions of all the people that she encountered. Do they resonate with her? We don't know. What we do know is, 
If you understand what you're exposed to, you will sort and file it quickly. If you do not understand what you're exposed to, it sits in your energy field until you have time to ebb. Ebb. Some things you can't even sort because you can't relate to it at all. But we need time to ebb. When we have time to ebb, then we can get back into the bottom to get into our own thoughts. Now, Spirit asked me to say this to you, and I will say it to you. When the thoughts of others become so deep and so thick that they start impinging on your own thoughts, you suffer depression. This is the cause of depression. When you lose your sense of self, this is why people commit suicide. They have no more sense of who they are any longer in the world. And their very last act to try to claim self is to take their life. I can at least claim my life. I don't know anything else about myself, but at least I can take one last step to say this is me. And that's why they do it so freely. If you can think about that and realize that when you are feeling not yourself, you have this mass of energy in your field that is not you. That's why you don't feel like yourself. Thank you, Patrick. Does it make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Also, from the skit, I wanted you to see, when you allow God's love to come in, did you see that God's love kind of just melts some of this stuff and you don't have to sort it anymore? As she was letting go her beliefs about the girlfriend and the boyfriend of the girlfriend, they were occupying a lot of space, right? As she's letting go that, openings can occur so the love of God can begin to filter through and just melt whatever's there. Some things we don't have to sort. Some things we can just melt it like a beautiful running water. Let it become not in our field anymore. And then when we come to that core of I am, finding me, I am, then the light of I am begins to move out through me and through my mind and energy field and shifts the vibration of everything in my field. So everything in my field now resonates with the I am. And I don't have to worry about those thoughts any longer. Is it interesting to you? Mm -hmm. All right. Has anybody felt that oppression when you feel like I don't even feel me anymore? I don't feel me. And you think something's wrong inside you. You think something's mm -hmm. broken in you. It's just you have not sorted. You have not taken time to sort. The power of the ebb. The power of the ebb. So... They wanted me to share with you some steps for staying there, if I can find them. And, I'm going to be lost. Do you want the steps? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I shall wing it. Hey. One of the steps is to simply sit. When you sit, for example, if you go and, have you ever... Uh, sat outside and just watch the clouds? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you lay on the ground and just watch the clouds? Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that, what happens? Does not your mind wander a bit? Mm -hmm. And you try to say, oh, that cloud looks like, oh, yeah, no, I'm thinking about this over here. When you're doing that, you're letting those thoughts process. You're letting them move through you, and they're processing out. You know? Mm -hmm. Quiet times when you're just sitting. What do most of us do if we call it an ebb time? When you're ebbing from the holidays, what do you do? Watch TV. Watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And what's coming into your field as you're watching TV? All the thoughts. The thoughts of everyone around you. The thoughts of what's on the television. You might even read a book. And books are great. But what if you're reading a book that's a novel that's... that's now you're taking on the energy field of another. Uh, books can be as real as, as everything. Your mind doesn't distinguish. Ebb is about relaxing into letting what I currently have masked have time to process. And as you know, of course, meditation is a wonderful way. Just to meditate, to let yourself go within and choose the Spirit of God to move through you. And in the Spirit of God, things will make sense to you. You will either, either be shown the answer to why it bothers you, or you will let it go. And the reality is, in your thoughts, if you're holding on to something that really bothers you, do you ever can't get something out of your mind? It has nothing to do with you. It, it does, it's not affecting your field. 
It's not threatening you in any way. She just can't get out of your mind. There is some part of you that is attached to it. And you can go within and you can just say, God, show me why this is important to me. And it may just be very simple that something happened when you were a kid and it reminds you of a feeling and they had the same feeling and then you can let it go. We are so responsible for our own energy fields. We're so responsible for the clearing of them. We're also responsible for what we take in. That's up to us as well. But when you know that you can clear them, what greater sense of peace can you have? So the gentle relaxing, the gentle sitting with a cup of coffee. You can also clear your energy field if you have a relationship with someone that can just listen without judgment. Most people are re resolving oriented. They are um, solution, -oriented. solution oriented. Thank you. Most people are solution oriented. And so the safe space when you start to say, well, can I just, can I just talk? Can I just talk? I just want to talk. And they're writing it down what you're saying. Because they're going to give you the formula to heal that. When it really wasn't your problem in the first place. You just wanted to talk. You just wanted to get out of your energy field. I just want to say it so it can be gone. I'm, I'm sorting it. Because as I hear myself say it, I'm also deciding is it valuable to me or not. No, you know what? I'm done with that. It, by hearing it, I get to process it myself. I don't need that solution back at me. But how often do we as individuals not provide one another that safe space just to talk? But that's a way to process. That's a way to ebb. If we could learn to talk to one another, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ebb right now. I'm gonna ebb. Will you listen to me? I'm gonna ebb. And then you can make a choice. No, I'm not gonna listen to you because I'm on go mode. I'm not the one to ebb with. Or somebody else. She will say that. Yeah. You make you be honest. But understand the power of the ebb. The gentle discussing, the gentle discussing. Have you ever picked up a metaphysical book? Honestly, one that's beautiful, and you're reading a paragraph in it, and you cannot go any further? You have no more room in your energy field for it. It's so beautiful, so bright, so light, so amazing. It's like, <gasps> yeah, i got to process that, because there's no room for any more of that in that field. <laughs> It is so bright, it's causing conflict with all the other thoughts. So I need to put the book down, put the book down, let it light, the thought I just brought in lighten all the rest of the stuff so I can have some more room, so I can take in another paragraph. When you have that moment, think. I just might need to go watch some clouds. I might need to just talk to somebody that's just going to listen and say nothing. And just hold my hand, tell me it's okay. I might need to ask. I might need to go into meditation. If we're going to live the life of spiritual awakening on the planet, we have to be awake to ourselves. And when we do this beautiful sorting process, who do we find? Us. We find us. You know, so many of you, and, and I can tell you this, so many of us will be doing great. We're walking on water just about. We're just so awesome, and we're living our spiritual truth. And then I might not see you for a week or two or a month or something, and I see you again, and you're like a different person. And you're like doubting yourself, and you're doubting your abilities, and you don't know if you're going to make it. And I want to just go, what happened to you? <laughs> you know who you are. Why are you, why, what? Well, then all these thoughts of others come out of your mouth. All these, and, I, and at that point, I'm fine. I become your <coughs> ebb, I'll be your ebb, and I just listen to you. All the thoughts of others. And normally I won't say anything unless you've asked me to counsel with you in the room. Then, of course, I will say something. But I'm aware of how we all, when we begin to doubt our own energy, our own goodness, and our own goals. What comes out of our mouth is what we've heard. Someone's opinion of us. Something, someone else that failed at doing what we want to do. It's the thoughts of others. You're all here. And eventually, 
all of you that have gone through that with me, that I've witnessed, do you know what happens to you? You come back to yourselves. <laughs> you come back to yourselves and go, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I am God's child and I can do this. What was I thinking? Okay, this is good. And we rally and we stand strong and then we become ourselves again. Become ourselves again. This series that we're working on in January is really about self-management. And when God gave me this visual that I hope, you, you, I hope it was helpful for you, I was specifically told this is what oppresses people. It's not the thoughts you take in. It's the inability to handle them. You've got to handle them. We need to process through these things so that we can come back to the center of who we are. Because if we don't, if we like put blocks around the world, we've separated from the world. And that's not our job. Our job is to be loved in the world. We just need to process what we have taken in. Is everybody breathing that in pretty good? All right. So if my thoughts create my reality, if my thoughts create my reality, and I am trying to create a reality, and I'm carrying around all of your thoughts, which are good, I'm sure they're all great, all your thoughts are good, but I've got all your thoughts in my head too, whose life am I going to start living? A lot of y'alls, yes. And then I'm going to do this for him, and this for you, and this for them, and this, blah, blah, blah. I'm not living my life any longer. I can have your thoughts, I can send you love, I can let God bless you, and I can let you go. Let you go, because you're God's child. And then I can come back to who am I? Who am I? And, and Cindy is multidimensional, and Cindy is multifaceted, and Cindy is quite <laughs> awesome and quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I own my interesting parts. <laughs> you know, we are all on the journey and the process. But the gift this morning from Holy Spirit is you guys are doing good. But you've got to stay in your heart and in your thoughts and in your world. You've got to do that. So we need that beautiful time that Jesus taught us to go away. Go to the beach where you can talk to Father God. Go to the mountain. Go out on your porch. Talk to a friend. Take in that holy book as much as you can. Meditate. And the last thing that you can do to help your mind ebb is to come to church. Because <laughs> at church, you're filled with people with hope. Every one of you has hope in your heart. That's why you're sitting in the chair. All of our friends and family, any of them that woke up this morning without hope, did not come. Because they have free will, they don't want to come. You guys came, you have hope, you have light, you have an effervescence within you. And when we, anyone, walks into that field, they feel the collective joy, they feel the collective hope. And we are fed by that. We're fed by the light and the thoughts of one another. And we're fed by the thoughts of God that come through. The words, the message, the, the acting, the beautiful songs. It feeds us. And when you leave... Have you not taken a break from the worries that you had before you walked in? This is an ebb as well. It's an ebb as well. And I see you guys processing during the service. I see you thinking about it. You thought, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> There's a lot of sorting that goes on. And that's okay. Because what we want to do is end this gathering with the feeling and the knowing that I am God's child doesn't matter what I did up to this moment. I have God in me, and I have a future that I can create. And that's where we want to be. Take a breath. Let's put our feet on the floor. God, I ask that your light enfold each one here. I ask that an umbrella engulf this sanctuary of peace. And ask that a golden column of light come over everyone as they step. And I would invite you all just to breathe in the peace. You 
Feel the chair. Feel your body. Feel your heart. And imagine in this column of light your guide is by your side. And the angel stands behind you. Let go. I let go and let God. God flow through me now. Flow through my mind, my body, my spirit. And see or feel the beautiful pink energy coming through, the feathers coming through, clearing your arc field, clearing your thoughts. Flow through me, God. And let your vision now f go to the heart. I am. I am. And feel the heart opening, just swelling up. And I love my life. I love that I get to live and do and be right here. Feel your gratitude to God. Feel your gratitude to your God and your angel. Feel gratitude just moving from you to spirit. I am held in the circle of life. Let your focus come back to the chair, back to your body. Say, I am good. I am, I am good. good. And so it is. So Tell me, open your eyes. <coughs> well, I hope you all learned something about someone you know. <laughs> And I would also encourage you, think about ebbing this week, consciously. It doesn't have to be for seven days. It could be for half an hour. It could be for a small time. Think about that. Say, I will. I will. Yay, God. Yeah. <laughs>